Hi, my name is Makana, and I want to start off my speech by asking you guys a question. How many of you remember life before modern technology? <laughs> I was expecting more. But um, those are the days of imagination, of real social communication, and an overall appreciation of life beyond the screen. I was able to grow up into a society that wasn't completely absorbed into the internet, and I cherish every bit of it. But now things are different for us. Every single part of our lives are consumed by the technology around us, both figuratively and literally. Not only has modern technology changed how we go about our lives, but it has also manipulated our physical health for the worse. Every single one of us. Our phones, our tablets, our laptops, the Wi-Fi around us, and cell towers especially, all play a part in the detriment of our overall well-being due to the proximity radiation that they emit. And since we're all living in such a technologically advanced society, exposure is ultimately inevitable. And, si oh. and this consistent exposure that we're all victim to can cause life-threatening issues to us decades on and can even alter our body's molecular capabilities immediately. And there's unfortunately very little we can do to fight it. Our cell phones alone emit radio frequency radiation that our skin absorbs on a constant basis, which was proven to be fact by the National Cancer Institute. And while this specific electromagnetic radiation is low level, our exposure to it definitely is not low level. And this is just from our phones. Even though there hasn't been consistent evidence that these radio frequencies could increase cancer risk, there has been solid biological evidence that these frequencies cause molecular heating. And again, these are just from our phones. There has been... Sorry. Now, if we look into the construct of Wi-Fi, that's a whole other level. There has been overwhelming evidence consist connecting Wi-Fi to a multitude of biological health defects. These defects include oxidative stress, our body's ability to detoxify and repair itself, sperm and testicular damage causing male infertility, decreased neural development in infants, apoptosis, aka programmed cellular death within us, cellular DNA damage, which can cause mutation of cancerous cells, estrogen and progesterone alterations, melatonin lowering, which causes sleep disruption, disrupted teeth development, cardiac changes, which include blood pressure disturbances, and growth stimulation of adipose stem cells, which is one of the main contributors of the storage of fat on our bodies. This is all just from 4G Wi-Fi and internet connections, yet these telecommunication companies want, us, want to up the ante more by furthering our exposure through the new 5G internet via cell towers. Since Wi-Fi wasn't enough, we have to slap on another layer to this silent epidemic. These 5G cell towers that wireless industries have been pushing expedited legislation for can cause nervous system breakdowns, body temperature elevation, further DNA damage, extensive cellular death, water molecule dysfunction, which leads to infertility, immune and neural system complications, bacteria property changes, and so forth. These Wi-Fi and wireless internet industries don't seem to care about us, because if they did, they wouldn't be trying to push for legislation at the state level, blocking the voices of our local governments, AKA us. The only way that we have some sort of a legal fight against these towers is if we say that they make our communities look ugly and undesirable. That's why some of them are camouflaged to look like trees out here. Well, I can tell you right now that these trees are no help to our environment, to our physical health, and to the generations that precede us. Modern technology seems to have no limits, yet obviously we do. So when will enough truly be enough? Thank you.
All right. There, there, there's a lot of stuff about the speech that's interesting, and I like the way that it's delivered uh, very much, but there are some things that are problematic. I'm not exactly sure what the proposition here is. Uh, it needs to be a lot more clearly stated. Uh, it sounded like you were going to be talking about the complications in our lives as a result of uh, uh, the use of these tablets and phones and everything, but it actually turns out that it's going to be an argument about a physical threat to our bodies because of these sorts of things. So you should say that. At the beginning of the speech, you should tell us that uh, the utilization of this technology causes uh, substantial harm to human beings, and I'm going to prove that that's true. Uh, on the, There's not really a structure that I can pick out. There are several places where you have lists of potential harms, and I think that they might fit together into categories. You have a list that talks about um, you know, potential cancer-related issues to the, uh, the radiation in, in, the, in the devices themselves. I think there's an argument that's talking about Wi-Fi and the separate issues that are related to that. And maybe there's a third point about uh, the 5G cell towers and the potential problems they're going to be developing. That's if I work hard at finding a structure. I shouldn't have to work that hard. You need to help the listener know what it is that your arguments are. So let's just assume for a moment that those are in fact your arguments. What is your proof on those particular points? The only one that had any uh, evidence cited was the first one that talked about the radiation admissions and the, the National Cancer Institute is cited for uh, the source on that particular point. After that, I get a long list of all these potential harms that are linked to uh, the use of material on the Wi-Fi or from this radiation. I don't know where any of those things came from. I don't know what proof there is for any of them. I don't know how high the risk is for this uh, and who's saying these things. There, there's a lot of assertions here without much proof, and you need uh, stronger evidence to be convincing of this, particularly since you're talking to an audience. Everybody sitting in here probably has a cell phone in their pocket. Everybody sitting here is using laptops and tablets, and they're all wondering, like we talked about before, well, where's the evidence of these particular problems? Now, of course, if they can't have kids, there would be some evidence of that. Sterility sounds like it's one of those things. So if you guys have trouble in five years conceiving, come back here and tell us, and uh, you know, then we'll give Nicoma a couple of extra points. You know, that's not gonna. That's not gonna work, though. You know, so we need we need to have that proof now. You know, yes, your, your absence of children is ten years from now. That'll be proof of her claim. Um, so we we need some better data here, and that's where I think it's it's lacking. I I think that you've got an interesting argument. I think you probably have proof for your argument that's not being cited here. It's probably in the bibliography, but it needs to be in the speech, and that's what's missing there. All right, thank you.